Hello friends. Welcome back to my channel Calibration Academy. If you are new to this channel, and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to get notifications, when we post the new video on the channel. And if you are preparing for a technical instrumentation interview, and if you need our help to pass the interview, please contact us on this email ID. In today's video, you will learn about the key parts of a pneumatic control valve and its functions. As you can see, it is air to close or fail to open the pneumatic control valve. And this is the air inlet port of the pneumatic control valve. The air inlet port is the point at which compressed air enters the system. This is a crucial part of pneumatic control systems, as it provides the energy required to actuate pneumatic components such as valves, cylinders, and actuators. The second most important part is diaphragm. Pneumatic actuators often use a diaphragm to convert the air pressure into mechanical force. The diaphragm separates the actuator's air chamber from the valve body and moves in response to changes in air pressure, thereby positioning the valve plug. Nitrile rubber, neoprene, PTFE or polytetrafluoroethylene, EPDM or ethylene propylene diene monomer, and vitin are most commonly used as diaphragm material. As you can see, this part is known as the diaphragm plate. The diaphragm plate provides structural support to the diaphragm. It helps maintain the shape and integrity of the diaphragm, especially when subjected to varying air pressures during valve operation. When compressed air is introduced into the actuator's chamber, it applies force to the diaphragm. The diaphragm plate transmits this force to the valve stem or actuator mechanism, causing the valve to open, close, or modulate according to the control signal received. Another important part is the actuator spring. The spring within the actuator serves primarily as a counteracting force or failsafe mechanism. If there is a loss of pneumatic pressure or control signal, the spring returns the valve to a predefined position usually fully open, fully closed, or specified intermediate position. This part is actuator stem. The actuator stem serves as a mechanical linkage between the actuator and the valve plug or disc. When the actuator receives a pneumatic signal, it generates a mechanical force that is transferred through the actuator stem to move the valve plug or disc, thereby regulating the flow of fluid through the valve. This part is known as the spring seat. The spring seat provides a stable and secure mounting surface for the actuator spring. Another crucial part is the spring adjuster. It is used to regulate the force exerted by the spring within the valve actuator. It is mainly used for bench set adjustment. By turning the spring adjuster, we can change the actuator response. There are mainly four functions of the spring adjuster. First of all, it can be used for pressure adjustment. By turning the spring adjuster nut, the technician can increase or decrease the force exerted by the spring. This adjustment is essential for calibrating the valve to specific operating conditions such as different flow rates or pressure levels. Secondly, it can be used for fine-tuning the valve response characteristics to meet the process requirement. It can be also helpful as a fail-safe mechanism. If there is a loss of pneumatic pressure or control signal, the spring returns the valve to a predefined position usually fully open, fully closed, or some intermediate position. Adjusting the spring tension can determine the fail-safe position of the valve in case of actuator failure or loss of control signal. Last but not least, the spring adjuster can help achieve stability and control of the control valve. Proper adjustment of the spring tension ensures stability and accurate control of the valve. It helps prevent issues such as valve oscillations, hunting rapid cycling, or overshooting. As you can see, this part is known as the indicator scale. The valve stem indicator scale serves as a reference guide for interpreting the position of the valve stem or actuator mechanism to specific flow conditions or set points. This part is the valve stem indicator. The valve stem indicator serves as a visual aid for operators or maintenance personnel to quickly determine the position of the valve plug or disc within a pneumatic control valve. Another important part is the valve plug. A valve plug is a component of a valve that controls the flow of fluid such as liquid, gas, or slurry by opening, closing, or partially obstructing the flow passage. Valve plugs are primarily used to regulate the flow of fluids through a piping system. By adjusting the position of the plug within the valve body, the flow rate can be increased, decreased, or shut off completely. 
This important part of valve is known as the valve stem. The valve stem is responsible for transmitting the motion from the valve actuator to the valve plug or disc. When the valve is operated, whether manually or automatically, the motion is transferred through the valve stem to open or close the valve. Last but not least, this is the diaphragm case of the control valve. A diaphragm case serves to enclose and protect the diaphragm, which is a flexible membrane used to control the flow of fluids or gases. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope this video is helpful for you. Please give us your valuable feedback in the comment box. And if you have any questions about this video, then please feel free to ask me your questions in the comment box. And please like and share this video with your friends if you think our content is informative for you and others.